Hello, my name is Sidra Maat Khan and I am going to uh, teach you guys chemistry, the syllabus 5070 as uh, it was discussed earlier as well. And um, let's begin with today's session. So uh, the syllabus contains uh, the following chapters and uh, we are going to learn about uh, experimental chemistry in it, uh, which is going to be the first lesson. And it is uh, the first lesson, which obviously I'm going to teach um, uh, going to teach today as well and then we are going to start with the particular uh, nature of matter then we're going to come to uh, the moles which is the um, most uh, confusing and the difficult uh, topic it is um, it has a difficulty level which is harder and um, students find it very hard all right so the next one is going to be electrolysis then we're going to come to the energy from chemicals chemical reactions and i'm also going to um, tell you guys about uh, the acid spaces and salts the periodic table the metals and the atmosphere and environment and comes the last and the lengthiest topic of all is the organic chemistry so this is the whole uh, syllabus and we're going to cover the whole syllabus during this whole time. Uh, please uh, stay consistent and um, you're going to find the notes as well uh, on our uh, slide. But this, these video lectures are going to be the best for you because they are uh, going to incorporate you and uh, you can um, learn it much better uh, through virtually, uh, virtually learning it. Okay. So... Coming to the first topic, as uh, I'm going to start uh, this topic from today, and uh, experimental chemistry includes um, each and everything about uh, the different apparatuses which uh, are used in the experiments. So let's come to the learning uh, objectives uh, for today's class. Um, I'm going to discuss and uh, name some appropriate apparatuses which are um, used for measurement of uh, time, temperature, mass, and volume. I'm also going to suggest suitable apparatuses which can be used in a variety of um, simple experiments such as a collection of gases or measurements of um, rates of reaction. So uh, we're also going to uh, discuss some methods of uh, purification which are used uh, to purify mixtures and um, I'm also going to describe what is paper chromatography and uh, what is thin layer chromatography and I'm also going to tell you guys that why is the retention factor values RF values why is it important and what is the significance of the use of locating agents whenever we use uh, chromatography and whenever colorless compounds they are um, used so uh, we are also going to deduce from given metal, melting and boiling points information that uh, the identity of the substances and uh, something about some information about uh, their purity. Now I'm also going to uh, explain that the measurement of purity in substances which is used in everyday life. Supposedly all of these substances, uh, for example, foodstuffs, drugs, cosmetics and everything. Uh, why, why is it important? Okay, so let's begin with today's class. So first things first, um, basically the first uh, our learning objective was uh, about um, the apparatuses. So what are basically apparatuses? Apparatuses, they are various um, instruments or containers or um, which are usually used in an experiment, okay? And we measure uh, different chemicals, different things using uh, different substances using those apparatuses. So this is the basic definition of an apparatus. All right. Then it is extremely important that these apparatuses, they need to be finely tuned. Okay. We need to finely tune them and they must be accurate, uh, as much accurate as possible. So that whatever uh, findings and measurements we are taking during the whole experiment, they need to be accurate enough. All right. So that whatever our results are uh, during the experiment or after the experiment, they are ac most accurate as possible. Okay. Then comes the SI units. SI units, they are basically the standard international units. And um, 
they are used for different measurements they are used for uh, different measurements throughout this whole for example for mass we use the standard si unit is um kilograms then um we have uh, amperes for um uh, current then we have moles and we have uh, kelvin as well for temperature we have seconds s okay for um time so they, these are different uh, units and as you can see over here in uh, this picture is uh, uh, basically a representation of what are the basic um, apparatuses which are commonly and usually used this is the funnel this is the bunsen burner or the gas burner and um, this is a test tube this is a conical flask this is a beaker this is a measuring cylinder this is a thermometer which is used for measuring um, temperature and this is a tripod stand all right this is a clamp stand then um coming to the next slide so over here uh this uh, uh slide is going to discuss about what is mass now i'm going to tell you uh, guys about um uh, the basic uh basic basic uh, units which are uh, discussed and basic measurements which are taken during the whole experiments okay for example if uh, we want to calculate the mass uh, we want to uh, um, tell that what is the amount of a substance being used okay so that is basically measured through this mass okay so mass is basically what it is the amount of matter any substance contains okay so the si unit of mass is kilograms however the units they can be uh, uh, other units as well for example if uh, some uh, substance is heavier it's going to be um, in kilograms if it's even smaller object then uh, the the mass can be in milligrams or grams and um, these conversions are very important as they come up in exams as well the conversions of uh, of the for of these units they are as follows i'm now going to tell you guys what is mass now i'm going to discuss with you the basic um, uh, measurements which are usually taken during the whole exams okay supposing we mass temperature time all of these things is something with volume which is usually usually taken okay these are the measurements which are usually taken uh, in um, uh, in the experiments in the chemi in chemistry experiments so what is basically mass mass is the amount of matter a substance holds now what does this mean this means basically that whatever the substance you are using it uh, it consists of some um, matter right so whatever the whatever the amount is okay that amount will be calculated and it will be referred to as mass all right so the standard si unit of mass is kilograms however uh, there are other units which can be used because if the object is smaller or if, or if, it, or if, it, if it's much bigger or uh, larger in quantity then um, other units have to be used so for example we can use kilograms we can use grams or if these uh, if there are much smaller objects then you can use milligrams or nanograms as well so uh, now uh, the most uh, basic questions which usually come up in exams are uh, regarding the conversions of um, um, of the units so these are the basic conversions which you need to know so that uh, it is easier for you that you will have to memorize these conversions right so now um, So these are the basic conversions which you need to know. For example, uh, one kilograms is equals to one thousand grams. Then there is one grams is equals to thousand milligrams, and then one ton is equals to thousand kilograms. So these are the basic conversions which you guys need to know. Okay. Then we coming to the next one. Coming to the next slide now. Okay. So. What uh, masses they can be um, uh, measured uh, using the balances. There are two types of balances. One is the beam balance, and another one is the uh, electronic balance. These balances, which you are seeing in the um, image, they are basically well, the one is the triple beam balance. The next one is the electronic balance, and the third one is the uh, spring scale. The spring scale is um, usually uh, used to Okay, the spring scale is usually 
uh, it is used uh, for smaller objects okay because it cannot uh, measure up to uh, much uh, heavier objects so first they're uh, talking about the beam balance the beam balance is uh, um, it, it, as you can see in the um, image as well it has a, on one end it has a pan and on the other hand it has a slider this uh, let me um, use this um, annotation so that i can really explain it to you over here so this is the pan over here and this is the slider okay so on one end uh, what is uh, done as you can see uh, using this pan uh, a mass or whatever uh, your object is you have to put it over here and then this slider is used um, uh, and it uh, whatever the sample uh, you have placed it on the pan uh, you have to move that scale on the um, on the slider so that uh, this mass which is uh, over here it becomes horizontal okay so because whenever you are going to put an object if it's heavy it's going to come down right so what is uh, this slider goes um, goes about so that this is all in line it is all horizontal okay so uh, when the beam becomes horizontal horizontal then you can take the reading whatever the reading is However, the digital ones are usually used uh, in um, uh, in many schools and in the in other uh, uh, whenever you are carrying out an experiment. And uh, obviously, because whatever the reading you are going to take, it's going to come from this slider, right? You're going to take the readings from the slider. So this uh, the accuracy of uh, this um, um, uh, this uh, instrument is usually is, it depends upon the uh, skills of the person and it depends upon the uh, person who was uh, who is observing and who is um, uh, taking the readings okay so uh, that person has uh, all the accuracy so uh, next coming to the next one the next one is the electronic balance uh, it is much easier to use and it's much more accurate because you're just going to place uh, your um, sample on it over it and then whatever the reading is it's going to uh, be digitally calculated and will be written over here you just have to uh, calculate it you just have to read it okay so um, the, it can even read to the nearest 0 0.01 grams as well and uh, um, it is extremely easy to use so it is much more um, uh, easier and it's much more um you can use it very uh, quickly and very easily okay so coming to the next slide now all right here is an example uh, which uh, i want to show you guys um as you can see over here the question says that uh, the mass of the beaker is 185 uh, 181.65 grams and when a uh, sample of ethanol is poured into the beaker the mass is raised to 243.76 grams okay so an ethanol sample of ethanol is poured into a into a beaker and then uh, the mass was raised to this much so now you have to calculate what what is the mass of uh, uh, the ethanol this is a very um, basic question and um, what you, you just have to just uh, subtract the mass of the beaker and the ethanol which is the total mass and then from uh, uh, will it will be minus by the mass of the beaker okay so what then you can get the mass of the ethanol so when you subtract uh, um, the mass of the beaker from uh, the mass of the beaker and the ethanol you will get uh, the mass of ethanol so it's going to be 62.11 grams it's very easy right so uh, over here i can say, show you um, a drawing it's uh, please excuse so this is the uh, um, mass of the beaker plus the ethanol right beaker plus ethanol wait beaker plus ethanol right so this is going to be this this mass 243.76 grams right it's going to be this then um the next one was the only the beaker nothing in it okay so it's going to be 181.65 only the beaker so you if you want to get the mass of the ethanol only what what you're going to do you're going to just subtract both right it is going to subtract both and whatever um uh the, your answer is it's going to be the mass of ethanol that is what they have done this is the solution right uh you just have to uh, subtract both of them and, and this is the final answer right so this is a very simple example coming to the next slide now all right so the, over here in this slide they're discussing about volume now uh, volume is um 
is amount of uh, um, amount within a container or within an empty space where um, whatever the substance has occupied for example usually volumes are taken for uh, liquids and um, uh, or they are taken for gases as well so that is the reason they are saying that if the um, whatever whatever the amount of space an object is occupying in that uh, container it is basically known as volume all right then the volume is measured in um, different uh, uh, units for example uh, milli, uh, meter cube uh, centimeter cube decimeter cube liters milliliters all right and so liters and milliliters they are not uh, the si units of volume and if you want to convert uh, the units now these conversions are also important over here that you guys need to know all of these conversions um whenever doing the um, experiments and whenever uh, solving the questions during your exams. Now, these are something you need to memorize. And one, milli one meter cube is equals to 1,000 decimeter cube. And one decimeter cube is 1,000 centimeter cube. So that means a centimeter cube is the smallest unit, right? And meter cube is the largest in all of, all of these three. Then we have one liter. One liter is equals to one decimeter cube. Both are same. Then one liter is 1,000 ml. And one ml is equals to one centimeter cube. So one ml and one centimeter cube, they are both equal, okay? So if you talk about, uh, this is uh, something you guys have to uh, memorize for your uh, exam purposes. Then uh, coming to the next uh, um, part, the next part uh, is um, basically um, telling us about the capacity of the different apparatuses. For example, there are different apparatuses which can be used uh, to calculate the volume of, um, uh, of different substances. For example, beaker, the conical flask, the burette, the bulb pipe, and um, so if you want to measure the volume of the gases, then we use the gas syringes. So because they are um, uh, they have a capacity of 100 to 250 centimeter cube uh, depending on uh, whether it is a smaller beaker larger beaker then they have a conical flask uh, see if beaker it it is something like this okay conical flask is something like this you see in your chemistry labs right then a buret is i will show the buret in other slides i guess i have uh, put one and um, then the bulb pipe it the uh, conical flask like it it uh, has the same um, capacity as the beaker uh, and the beard is has a capacity of around 50 centimeter cubes then the bulb pipe it uh, can only measure exact volumes if, if for example supposing we, uh, you have a volume of 31 uh, centimeter cube it cannot measure it okay it can only have it only has the measurements for these um, for these certain 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 exact volumes okay then if there is a gas syringe then you can uh, measure the volume of a gas as well and um, the gas syringe can measure up to around 100 centimeter cubes so this is all coming to the next one so as uh, discussed that uh, i have now uh, told you about a few of uh, the apparatuses and as you can see all of the different apparatuses they all have different uh, kinds of uh, accuracies some is going to be much more accurate so we have to be um, precise that which which apparatus is much more uh, suitable and much more appropriate to be used or uh, to calculate or to measure uh, any substance or any uh, sample whatever we have so that is the reason they have different uh, degrees of accuracy for example if i talk about beakers because they um, uh, they do provide with an estimate of the volume but if I say well, how much accurate is beaker to calculate or measure a volume, so I would be saying that beaker has the least accuracy, right? That is the reason whenever we are titrating or something, when uh, the process of titration or, uh, um, is going on, so you usually use a burette, right? You usually use a burette and burette uh, gives a reading of nearest up to um, 0 0.05 centimeter cube. Whereas a pipette uh, is um, much more accurate to around 0.05 centimeter cube as well. Then the volumetric flask, whatever, uh, that volumetric flask has an accuracy of 0.1 centimeter cube or whatever the, um, wherever it, um, the substance volume comes 
that that they have been saying that it's a mark value of so the volumetric class is accurate to this much of the mark value so this is why uh, accuracy is so much important that is the reason for example if in certain experiments you need to be very very much accurate because even if single um, uh, single more even if a, um, any acid or any alkali is added in excess then the whole readings all of those readings they just they just went in vain okay so this is the reason that accurate um, measurements they are taking and accurate that is why the reason those uh, certain um, instruments are taken which are uh, which have much more accuracy right okay so um uh, one thing more over here i am uh, going to share with you guys that um for example some other questions which come up in your exams or past papers even you can see that um let me show it to you wait <laughs> So the liquid is uh, measured from the bottom of the meniscus if it's an aqua solution. Supposingly, if you have an aqua solution. Now over here, I'm going to draw it. And supposingly, this is a burette. And these are the markings on it. Please ignore my drawing. It's, it's pathetic. <laughs> okay. So um, supposingly, these uh, kind of... Uh, um, Questions can even come up in your exams. You must have gone through uh, the uh, past papers as well. So these are uh, the, this is um, for example, if it's an aqua solution, and uh, whatever um, whatever the liquid is present over here, this is the bottom of the meniscus. Now this is the meniscus. Now you are going, you are viewing from here, right? Why are you viewing from here and why not from here? Because obviously you're going to read it wherever the markings are. Now this is an I. Please ignore. Okay. This is an I. Now you are reading it from here, okay? So your line of sight should be just here. Or where should it be? It should be just at the bottom of the meniscus because it is an aqua solution so it should not be over here it should be over here just at the bottom of the meniscus right if you're reading something i will draw the eye as like this from next time however this looks very weird okay so this is from the bottom of the meniscus from there you should be um, viewing uh, the measurement of that liquid whatever it is in the present in the instrument in case you have mercury inside or any other liquid which is op opaque what are you trying what are you going to do now um, let me yeah I'll have to draw it. Now these are the markings. Supposingly if it's a burette or something. Or if it, yeah, if it's a burette. So what happens? Because that liquid is opaque, you cannot see the bottom of the meniscus. Right? You will not be able to see the bottom of the meniscus. It is only going to form one upper meniscus okay the top meniscus this is the top meniscus this is a bottom meniscus okay you are only going to see the top meniscus because of course it is opaque you will not be able to see the bottom one this is the reason that for opaque uh, liquids you have to view the measurement from above or the bot the top of the meniscus, right? This is why that we measure any volumes which are opaque, and we have to measure their top meniscus. Okay. So for the liquids that are opaque, their lower meniscus is not can it cannot be seen. This is the reason that we measure from the upper level. So this uh, can come up in your exams as well. That which one is uh, which, and how can we um. Uh, 
maintain the accuracy or uh, of an experiment to maintain the accuracy of an experiment what you can do is that you can use accurate and much more um, uh, precise um, uh, equipments and uh, instruments okay so this is something which i needed to tell you over here then coming to the next point um as it's mentioned over here that the insoluble supposing the insoluble they are not only the volumes of liquid as we discussed that they can be volumes of gases as well so for those gases which are not soluble which are insoluble they can be converted they can be collected in an inverted burette which is filled with water because obviously it is um insoluble so it is not at all going to react or mix up with water okay this is the reason that you can collect it over, uh, over an inverted burette which is filled with water then those those uh, gases which are uh, soluble in um, water for those gases what can we do you can uh, use mercury okay coming to the next slide now so this slide is uh, now uh, coming uh, now we have already discussed the mass the volume and uh, now i'm going to share what is uh, time and temperature so time for measuring time uh, a digital stopwatch is used and um, it is uh, nearest to the fraction of a second so this si unit is also going to be in seconds right then temperature as we all know that uh, temperature is the degree of hotness and uh, coldness of any object or any body and the temperature si unit is also kelvin so uh, the next com conversion question which comes up in exams this first question first chapter is all about conversions so the first conversion from uh, the next conversion which can come up in your exams uh, regarding um, the temperature is going to be this this centigrade to kelvin or from kelvin to centigrade so they will give you the um, uh, for example if they ask you to calculate in the temperature in centigrade you will have you will be given uh, kelvin uh, temperature and the temperature in kelvin and you just have to put it over here and then you have to just subtract it with 273 and you'll get the answer supposingly if the um, temperature is, which is present is in centigrade then you will have to add it in 273 and you will get the answer in kelvin and um, always 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 this is a very key point over here in your exams please 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 mention your units i know that most of the students they just leave it as it is and they just do not at all uh, write their um, answers in units and it carries one whole mark okay so you have to be very accurate about this and you have to recheck your paper again and again and please check it that you mention the um, answers in uh, and mention all the units as well one more thing i want to discuss with, which is regarding exam uh, point of view that whenever a question comes up and there uh, there is a certain thing which uh, for example they are um, they have given two values one uh, temperature is in degree celsius and the other one is in kelvin and they are asking you uh, that you have to tell it in um, uh, the temperature in kelvin so what you will do you will cal you will convert this as well into ke kelvin and this will also so all of the temperatures which have been given over there or all of the units so they have to be converted in both should be the same and then they will be uh, used to calculate your answer whatever it is whatever the question says so so please keep this in mind as well that each and every measurements which are used they all need to be in the same unit okay this is what i'm trying to say so now uh, coming to the next point so liquid glass thermometers they are used and they have a scale of minus 10 to 110 degrees celsius if i say what is the range of this scale now what you are going to do you are going to subtract both of them so you will get the range okay some students do it very uh, they just they just get confused in this point that is the reason i have just and one question just came into my mind uh, it came uh, comes up in exams as well so the liquid which can be used is can, it can be either uh, an alcohol or um, some other dye if uh, just to make it visible and uh, mercury even thermometers they are used why they are used so much is because 
uh, they are very responsive and um, um, to the temperature this is the reason that the mercury is mostly used however it is also very dangerous and um, the next ones which uh, can be used are electronic thermometers as most clearly uh, they have come up in our ma market as well okay so now we have already discussed what are the basic uh, measurements which are taken during a chemistry experiment now i'm going to tell you about uh, what are the suitable apparatuses which can be used for collection of uh, gases or for um, measuring the rates of reaction. So first talking about the measuring of uh, uh, rates of reaction. First, for example, uh, the most common reactions uh, which uh, the rate of reactions which are the chemistry experiments are done using the metal and acid or the carb metal carbonate and the acid. So the reactions of metal or metal carbonate with the acid, they usually produce gases. So different apparatuses need to be used. Why different apparatuses need to be used? Now you see over here that, um, okay, um, shall I use my pen? Yeah. So now metal and metal carbonate, it can be an aqueous solution as well. It can be solid. And this one as well, it just need to be a solid. So both the um, measurements, they are going to, they both are masses. So both the samples, they are going to be measured in their masses. And then for acid, you will need to be uh, using, uh, you will need to be calculating the volume or measuring the volume of the acid. So you will need something else, supposedly um, a burette or a, um, or a pipette, right? Then, Gases will be produced, so they are measured using the uh, gas syringe, right? Then, this is the reason that there, there is combination of uh, apparatuses which are being used. Because some, now you're measuring mass, now you're measuring the volume, now you're measuring the volume of the gas as well. So this is the first experiment. The first uh, reaction which uh, um, uh, is written over here is about metal and diluted acid. So when both of them they combine together they form a metal salt and hydrogen gas is released now hydrogen gas is released it will be uh, collected in uh, a gas syringe okay then over here the next uh, experiment or the next reaction is about metal carbonate and diluted acids when they both react together they form metal salt and um, because it is carbonate so carbon dioxide gas is going to be released okay right so what is now rate of reaction? So or these uh, two gases, they are going to be collected in um, uh, the gas syringe, okay? Oh, okay, one more thing I want to discuss over here, that um, diluted acid, as I talked, this diluted acid, which is um, uh, written over here, it is going to be, um, yeah, it is going to be, Uh, do I have uh, a highlighter over here? No, I don't. Okay, so um, in a, um, for measuring a dilute acid, a dropping funnel is used. And um, then what happens? That dropping funnel has all the diluted acid. And the metal is present in a conical flask. Okay, after measuring the metal, or uh, after measuring the sample of the metal or metal carbonate it is uh, placed inside the conical flask then what happens the dropping funnel has the um for example over here i am going to show you uh, now this is going to be the funnel and this is going to be the conical flask so this conical flask has oh, wait this conical flask has the metal or the metal carbonate, whatever, and it is measured, okay? And this uh, dropping funnel has uh, uh, is going to uh, pour in all the uh, diluted acid into this, okay? So when that will be poured, they both are going to be released. And then over here, let me erase it a bit. Over here, 
is an attached gas syringe. Why there is an attached gas syringe? Because, right, and this is measured, okay? This has uh, uh, markings on it, okay? So, whatever the reaction is going to take place, what is going to happen? It is going to release gases. So, all of the, those gases, for example, hydrogen gas is released if um, a metal and dilute acid, they combine together. Metal salt is left behind inside the conical flask and hydrogen will be collected inside the gas syringe, okay? Or the volumetric syringe, you can say. If it's metal carbonate and the dilute acid is poured in, a metal salt will be left behind and the carbon dioxide will be um, collected inside the gas syringe or the volumetric syringe. So you, going, uh, you can uh, um, measure this uh, volume uh, of the gas which, is, um, which, is, which has been collected inside the uh, gas syringe. All right. So over here, one more thing I want to discuss was that this whole uh, reactions which are taking place. Now, if you want to calculate the rate of reaction, now rate of reaction means what time it is uh, consuming and what is the rates. So, so this is also um, uh, the timing, right? We, we are talking about the timings over here. So what can you do is you can... Um, uh, measure the volume of the gas which has been collected inside the uh, gas syringe and uh, using that volume uh, the rate uh, the rate can be calculated that at uh, till how much time is it is uh, it is taking for the experiment to complete so uh, this means that a stopwatch has to be used right this uh, stopwatch has to be used as well so over here now did you see they, that uh, so many things they have been used uh, other than the temperature uh, the rest of the things they have been used this is the reason i was telling you guys that this uh, all of these uh, things they are um, basically basic things which have to be used so very bad stopwatch however <laughs> Okay, so you're going to just uh, uh, get to know, you just get to know that whatever the time is for the, whatever the time it takes for the whole reaction to complete. And then uh, that time is going to be the um, rate of reaction for the whole experiment. Okay, and then uh, you can even uh, calculate the rate at which the, this mixture is going to lose its mass. So uh, you can pre-calculate the mass, pre-measure the mass, and then you can measure the mass after the experiment as well and then you can get the rate it's very easy all right so now i'm going to clear this all coming to the next slide now so over here in this um, um in this slide i'm going to tell you that how uh, we can collect different gases okay so what are the different methods uh, to collect the gas and um, we have uh, the slide is going to share about those gases which are soluble also and which are uh, insoluble because we have two types of gases. Uh, they can be um, they can be even um, denser than air. They can be less dense than air as well. So that is the reason that um, the gases they are basically some uh, when the gases they are not soluble or insoluble in water and uh, we even do not require it dry. For example, some gases, they must not be mixed with uh, other gases or they must not be uh, moist, okay? So if they are not required dry, then what you have to do, you just have to collect them. For example, whatever the experiment is, that experiment will be over here. And that the, um, after the completion of the experiment the, or the reaction, what is going to happen? The gas which is which has evolved, it is going to just... Uh, travel to this tube, to this inverted tube, which is placed over water. And because it is insoluble, it is not going to mix with water and only and only uh, the pure gas will be calculated um, in an inverted uh, tube, all right, it's, which is um, uh, placed over the water in, um, in a dish. The next two methods over here, which, are, which are, is also shown in this uh, picture, that um, the first one is the downward delivery method and the other one is the upward delivery method. So these two methods of uh, collection of gases, they basically um, depend upon the density of the gas, whatever uh, the gas is, that, which I told you that, that it can be denser than air as well, it can be less dense than air as well. So the gases, uh, they, if uh, they are denser than air, obviously you can th think of it that um, they are going to go down. This is why denser 
than air that is why downward velocity and less dense than air that is why upward velocity okay so achha, one more thing i wanted to share over here that um, uh, these gases uh, let me uh, use the pen again okay these gases the chlorine carbon dioxide and so2 they are all dense than air how can i uh, get to know this because for example if i talk about um, carbon dioxide it has a molecular mass of 44 so all of these gases they are all dense and they are why are they less dense than air they are collected by the upward delivery method and the gases which are denser than air they are collected by the downward delivery method how can you learn this d for denser and d for downward dense means down and less dense means it's going to go up okay so h2 has uh, a molecular mass of molecular mass of two okay so see it's less dense and this is much more dense 44 molecular mass all right one more thing i uh, i wanted to share in this uh, photograph as you can see over here it is uh, written downward delivery but upward displacement of air now students usually um, get confused in this that what is delivery and displacement of air means when the gas is pure gas is going to be collected it is going to go down so it will all be collected over here in this part okay because it is dense right dense denser than air downward delivery so where is the air going to go the air will be displaced on the upper side so all of the rest of the part is going to be air okay all of this rest part is going to be air this was very bad so all of this part is going to be air. This is why we are saying it as upward displacement of air. Then over here in this, um, you can see that the tube is now inverted. Why is it inverted? Because uh, now the uh, delivery is upward. So if it's less dense than air, it is not going to go down. It's going to go up. So H2 is going to, be, uh, go, is going to go up and it's going to be collected in this part right so where is the air going to go because air is much more dense than this gas hydrogen gas that is why it is going to be displaced on the downward side this is what they mean by upward delivery and downward displacement and downward delivery and upward displacement 